This video may or may not prove that the reset happened 400 years ago. I hope you're all doing well, and welcome. I was gonna run to the P.O. box, but it's cold and windy and I'm bitter. Some like this time of year more than others, I don't. The death of the season. And we've talked about the reset and how it's very possible that it would occur this time of year. When it does, the spiral going further and further out, less and less light each day. And if there were a reset on December 25th, the sun would not return on its course. It would continue to travel south from our perspective, and we would see a flipping of the plasma charge. And this was a picture shared by Ewar, and here also a picture that Ewar has shared. The analema, this phenomenon, and if you photograph the sun at noon throughout the year, this is what you'll get, really doing a figure eight. And this is repeatable, year after year. If we were randomly flying through space, this would not be possible and predictable. However, there is a slight variance to this pattern. And I believe that keeping track of this pattern and the sun and all the luminaries is the key to understanding when the arrival of the next reset will be. Very fascinating to see the stuff he's kicking out. And these are the sun's cycles over a course of several thousand years. And what we notice is everything gets a little more settled. Or as it's put here, the curve of recovery. And I believe back here would have been the last reset. And the subsequential years representing a recovery or a rebalancing and basically all of the old world structures are utilizing their buildings for several purposes as we've discussed so many times free energy is just one of the purposes perhaps even just a byproduct another one that flat fact a great channel had pointed out was the simple use of monitoring the luminaries and the sun and its rays as we can see here the sun passing through and this actually simply being a gauge for monitoring the events in the sky above and this perhaps is more important than anything more important than free energy how nice it would be to know if or when the next reset was upon us now i've talked about brian Lamb's work, and he had done very good work, putting a lot of puzzle pieces together. I was not happy with him selling information that potentially could save millions of lives, and I took my chances and did not purchase his doomsday package. But I did follow up on all the news that followed after his disappearance, and a lot of the people that he had sold this information to felt let down. He had made a prediction, a date for the reset, and when it didn't transpire, he pretty much abandoned his followers. And I'm not going to judge, just stating my thoughts. And I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think a lot of the information was very accurate, but as the Bible says, nobody shall know the date. And here's another timekeeping device. This one is really fascinating. Poor resolution. And here, potentially in Rome? I'm not sure. Absolutely amazing, these ruins. And here we can see a little hole in a cathedral used to measure or calculate the sun's alignment. Running right along this line, and this makes a lot more sense for the layout of a cathedral. Long rows, not meant for wooden pews, 
but rather as an instrument to calculate, needing a long, long run to make these calculations throughout the year. And here in the winter solstice, sometimes a long run is not enough, and some cathedrals, such as the Saint Sulpice, has an obelisk in it. And this is absolutely fascinating. What a glorious reset timekeeper. I could imagine that if the sun continued to drift anymore, indicating a coming reset, it would light up the top of the obelisk. An absolute warning that the sun was not going to return on its normal course. And this was shared with me by someone in a comment. And this is Quebec, the Chateau Frontenac, that I love so much. And this is basically sitting on a massive star fort. And we've looked at this star fort before. And this video creator was watching the clouds pass over the chateau and gather in this pointy fashion right above the building. And I'm not sure if she watches our videos. I don't think so. But she recognized it. I also think she was bringing some paranormal element into it, possibly. But nonetheless, we in this community know what could create this. And this tells me that the chateau is still functional. At least the tech on top. And let me try to show you a little more of this video. We'll just look at some stills. And it looks like she was taking a recording of a recording. I would love to see the original of this. But it was a real-time video where the clouds were just drifting by. And here's a great one. We see a electrical ether type of discharge in the shape of the building. And the clouds keep moving by, and yet it continues to form this antenna tech shape and kind of reminding me of the Cambodian temple. And now we're gonna look at something else that was shared with me by Holly. Thank you, Holly, this was awesome. And here we're told of a Fort Visay in Mumbai, India. Always fun when we go to India. And we have this Romanesque looking fort, really massive fort in complete ruins, sometimes called Fort Basin. It's a monument of great importance and protected by the officials. Officially, it was built during the Indian dynasty, Yadavas of Devagiri in 1184. Officially, in the narrative, we're told the Portuguese reached the west coast of India in 1498 when the Portuguese explorer Vasco de Gama landed at Calcutta. The Portuguese Empire gained control of the city. Some treaty was signed. And again, this very Romanesque fort in India. And we're told it was built by the Portuguese, who arrived in the 1400s. And here we can see a Portuguese crest and here a Portuguese crest. So what's wrong with this picture? Portuguese tombstones can be found here in the church ruins. These tombstones that I joked about in a past video. A very depressing fate for the dead. And we can see Portuguese writing in these tombstones. Okay, so officially this thing was built in 1184. It has a Romanesque feel. But then they find these Portuguese tombstones in it. So it's supposed to be Indian, but then we have these Portuguese tombstones. And here we can see the dates on these tombstones. So here we have DE684 Anos, year. I hope that's coming in. And here we have the year 601 Anos, in Portuguese, 601 and 684. The Portuguese, remember, officially the narrative tells us, didn't arrive until the 1400s. 
And yet these tombstones are reading a thousand years earlier. So what can we conclude? That the Portuguese built this in India in the year 684. And really fascinating, be it on coins, on buildings, and now on graves. Matching the years on the graves with the timeline, and we constantly find our added thousand years to our timeline. Okay, let me just interject here. We are in the year 2022. If we have had a thousand years added to our timeline, the year is currently 1022. This Portuguese gravestone reads 684. If we subtract the difference from the 1022, we get 338. This person died on this tombstone a mere 338 years ago. Or 338 years ago, the Portuguese occupied India. And I just had to lay that out there. And the Indian narrative is just as doctored up as all other nations throughout the realm. So here they tell us in the 600s, the Chinese visited India. When really, when we just looked at this gravestone, we see that it was the Portuguese that visited in the 600s and not the Chinese. So just screwing everything up, yet all the puzzle pieces are here for us. And a very exciting time to be living in, where everybody is helping to make sense of this. And here we can see another tombstone with IS-79. And very interesting to consider that the year we're living in could very well be 1022 AD. And the times of the Bible and King Solomon and everything that we know could have been as little as a thousand years ago. And it's really beginning to seem that way. Now, on a similar note, do we see such things in America? Somebody recently brought this to my attention, and we've looked at this film footage many times before, and just anomalous in a million different ways. But we won't discuss any of those today. We're going to go straight to the end of the track, or the terminal hub. And here we go, here we go, here we go, and watch this. Boom. Right at the end of the terminal, we see a date of erection being 896. 896 for this terminal hub, and essentially for the whole city. And what would happen only a few days after this film was shot? we would have the great supposed earthquake. And it would be interesting to find some photos of this. Here I'm trying to get a bunch of different frames, and as far as I can tell, it's as clear as could be. 896. Of course, let me know your thoughts. And thank you whoever shared this with me in San Francisco. And I've always marveled at these pictures found in old books, and we always wonder how they built these structures. And when I saw these images, I thought about some titans, some massive giants, just setting the buildings in place, laying out the foundation for future man, as if man just had some role to play, part of the function of this reality. And oftentimes these construction photos that we see are either destruction, or a cleanup operation, which the whole realm was clearly in need of after some event, and how easy it would be to build some of the most impossible structures if you were giant. And this is Chicago from a hundred miles away. We shouldn't be able to see it. And where I live, a hundred miles from Salt Lake City, I can see those mountains from where I live. And I can verify it when I go for a drive. I can pass each peak. And when I get to the big ones, that I can see from a hundred miles away, I know that I'm in Salt Lake. And along with keeping time and gathering atmospheric energy, 
overall, could these buildings have a much greater purpose than anything we have considered? And it was something that I thought of today. I'm surprised I remembered. Usually when I sit down to share, I forget everything. But my thought was that these could be vents. And we've discussed the massive infrastructure that could exist under our feet. And my thoughts were that the most beautiful buildings throughout the realm, the ones that inspire the most awe and wonder, oftentimes now designated as government capital buildings, cathedrals, and such, may simply be ventilation, or simply a part of the machine. Oftentimes I call them machines, but what if they were just a component of the greater machine? What if the whole building was a valve, the most ornamental pressure release valve we've ever seen? Or again, ventilation, which would be needed if there was an entire city or realm of habitation under our feet. And I believe that they all served maybe up to a hundred functions. And what we view as decorative and ornamental all has a purpose. Many of these buildings, when examining the narrative, we find have underground subways. Even many of these temporary world's fairs served as hubs for travel. And long ago in my research, when examining the world's fairs, I imagined that these were emerging points for survivors who had been fortunate enough to be taken down into these under-realms, avoiding the reset and their demise. Otherwise, there just is no good reason. And this is a picture of the construction of the St. George Temple. This is one of the most photoshopped pictures I've ever seen, and it is official. And these men are clearly not really here. And maybe being brought into the underground would have been worse than just being wiped out in the reset. Maybe there wasn't a very good plan, or perhaps this was the plan. Nonetheless, we see these catacombs in every city, always underground, always stacked neatly, polished bones, not a hair or chunk of fat or meat remaining on the bones. To me, indicating that they have been boiled and boiling is a great way to get meat off of bones. And this would explain to me the reason for all these catacombs. If there was any sort of prosperity on the surface, there'd be no need to bring the bones down under. This is something that happened while everybody was stuck underground. They had to consume to survive, and then they had to discard and had a lot of time on their hands. And for many years, I've been drawing brick buildings, leaning, missing chunks, in ruins, even before I knew about this research. It's almost like something was prodding me before I even cared. Nowadays, I've added things like this to the little mountains that I've always drawn. Little windows, which I find appropriate now. Even the river seems like it's flowing from this building now. And as I've mentioned before, I was born in Atlantic City, and eventually we would move to Arizona when I was five. But I'll never forget the feelings I would get. And such a scene here as depicted in the Bronx is very similar to what I grew up seeing. I myself lived in a brick apartment complex and sometimes I think we know more as children, and eventually it begins to fade. And there's no good reason for the Bronx or Atlantic City looking like this by the 60s and 70s. Like Hiroshima, or any war-stricken city or nation. And I really love it because I think it's one of the best depictions of what all of our cities would have looked like. Even Salt Lake City, when the Mormons rolled in, I believe would have looked like this too. And any construction photos that we're seeing 
would just be fixing up buildings like this. What do we always see in the construction photos? Scaffolding, the first thing to go up. And usually that's all people need. A building with some scaffolding in front of it, and they might say, Aha, here is a construction photo. When really, they could have just been refacing it and putting windows in, and cheap signage. And the Bronx looking exactly like the Civil War. I think pretty soon we're not going to be able to say that word either. And the Civil War just looking like the fall of Rome. Or World War blank. And here again, clear up to the 70s. Again, this is a scene I recall in Atlantic City as well. Very similar to the Bronx. And even as a four-year-old who knows nothing, the four-year-old can feel the feelings and maybe possibly remember a past life. But even when I look at these photos, I have this feeling that I had. You don't have to know anything. You just know that something is not right. And here's a look at some ruins in the Bronx. Brick, concrete, antiquitech. So here I want to show a picture of the Bannerman Castle in what appears to be 1926. Of course I made a video on this not too far back, but I just received an email and it piqued my interest again. Here we can see the castle is actually in perfect shape. Fully intact roof, another little structure, and I'm sure this is just buried. And all the retaining walls. In my mind, this castle survived a great flood, probably built before the river was raging, clearly. And about 30 years after this photo, the castle looks like this. The minute man shows up, it goes to ruins. Again, there's just parts sticking up in the middle of the river in present times. And if you remember the narrative, shortly after this, there was a great fire. And we ended up with this, these ruins. And here's a terminal station in... Indianapolis, and clearly repurposed. This could have easily been a cathedral. And in my next video, I hope to talk about this. The laying of the transatlantic cable in 1858. And few things could be so ridiculous. And I look forward to having a little look. But for today, I thank you for joining me, and do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want. Okay, I think this is the best part of the video, and as a bonus, I'm just going to recap. Again, we're told we're in the year 2022. We have our added thousand years in which we have countless examples that would give us a actual year of 1022. We see in Portugal gravestones marked 684 as seen down here. And if the year was currently 1022, these graves or deaths occurred 338 years ago. And if we look over here at the San Francisco terminal in some of the last surviving footage, and this footage has been colorized, and this man looks green, we have a date of 896. Erected 896. Again, if we use our formula here, we're in the year 1022, and the year 800 or 896 would have been about 300 years ago. Again, two small examples indicating a reset as little as three to 400 years ago. So let me know your thoughts. Of course, as always, I don't know. I love you all, and I'll see you next week.